Why should we exercise? Why can't we just sit on the couch all day long and channel surf? Right. Well, we're, we're actually geared in our genes. We're actually geared to sit on the couch and to eat the highest caloric food that we can have. And this is why I think we, we have the obesity crisis and the diabetes crisis today. Um, and I, I really think that that's part of it. Uh, and, but we have to, and, and be, but these days we need to know that our coevolution of our culture has allowed us to be able to sit on the damn couch and to be sedentary much more than we've ever been in our lives. Uh, in, in my lifetime, I've, you know, seen these huge change and around the world. So it's not just here in the U S but, uh, we, we, we are seeing this problem with, with, uh, the, our sedentary lives. And so, but we're geared to move as well. We're geared to move. We had to do both. We had to conserve our resources, our food resources, as well as we had to move to get them when we were hunter gatherers, when our brains and our genes developed. So our, our brains evolved to help us be better movers, the best movers that we could be. And, and, and with that, eventually, when we added language, when we had a social involvement, our, our, our moving brain became our thinking brain and our interacting brain and our calculating brain because we had to do that to move correctly and remember where and heck we're, what we're supposed to do and to sequence our movements and to, and to re remember what we shouldn't do. Uh, so we, we're, we're made to move. And, uh, and we need to pay attention to that. And exercise rewards us in so many ways when we move. Uh, not just endorphins or, or endogenous morphine, which people talk about uh, from the early days of the Boston Marathon when we can measure endorphins. And yes, they do go up, but they're only part of the story. We have all kinds of changes in the brain that occur to help us regulate our emotions and optimize our cognitive capacity. Simply said, we increase our uh, use of, of more of our brain cells in exercising than we do in any other human activity. And what we know and what we talk about now in neuroscience in the past 25 years or so the brain is like our muscle. The brain is a muscle. The more we exercise it, the more we grow it. And when we don't exercise it, it goes fallow. It starts to erode. And, and this, is, this is the whole mantra is to keep moving, keep going, keep, keep going to new stuff, keep learning. Uh, and, and, and we know that this, this prevents the onset of uh, cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. Um, and, and all of that, but pause there for a second, if you could, John, um, <clears throat> are you, are you saying that, I mean, you're talking about movement cognitively, like doing crossword puzzles. Okay. You're also talking mainly about moving the body. Um, it, as you know, it, it has been found that doing, you know, cognitive activity, like crossword puzzles, learning a new language, et cetera, uh, learning from you, uh, will actually help, you know, slow the onset of dementia, you know, reduce the likelihood of it, et cetera. But you're talking about physical movement too. Are you saying that me getting on my treadmill, grinding away for half an hour, you know, when I ought to, or walking around the neighborhood, you know, a mile, you know, an hour or two a day, are you saying that's going to also uh, reduce the possibility of dementia for people? Oh, even more so than, than doing Sudoku or crossword puzzles, even more so. The, the studies are very clear. Okay. And, uh, uh, the Mayo Clinic three years ago did, the Department of Neurology looked at over 1,600 papers looking at exercise and its effect on cognitive uh, decline, cognitive preservation, Alzheimer's disease, 1,600 papers, all of them pointing to uh, a positive effect of exercise in improving even in the elderly, improving their cognitive capacity, not just keeping it but making it 10 to 11% better. So even if you were a couch potato in your 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, who knows? Uh, even in your 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, you can get a benefit from being physically active. 
Absolutely. And, and our body is geared to, to help you do that if you do it slowly. You don't want to join CrossFit tomorrow if you're a couch potato. You know, you're going to be at the orthopedic <laughs> surgeon. But, but you can gradually, gradually, you know, uh, uh, our body adapts just like our brain adapts. And yes, I mean, doing crossword puzzles and Sudoku and all that, 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 that has some benefit, but not nearly as much as the benefit uh, that we have when we move. When we, when we're moving in space, when we're learning new things, when we're doing yoga, when we're uh, even any kind of martial arts or uh, the usual kind of exercise of running, swimming, climbing, playing games, uh, and 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 all of that, and it, because you're using more cells, because the brain evolved to make us better movers. And so the whole brain is is much more engaged when you're moving and learning. And uh, that's the ultimate, uh, when you're challenging yourself and moving. So running on the treadmill, eh, running outside up and down hills or, or, or walking fast uh, and, and observing and being mindful of where now you're at, like we were as hunter-gatherers, you know, I mean, that is the ultimate tax on the brain, which helps it grow and helps it be vibrant.